So uh, thank you much for your time. Um, some of this I covered this morning uh, during the, um, the panel session, but nonetheless, I'll go through some of the same amount of details uh, in slide format that I talked to verbally. Uh, but just very quickly on CDI as an organization, um, acquired by Fujifilm a couple of years ago out of Madison. You can see based on employees, very sort of heavily biased towards um, R&D staff, production and quality. Um, and um, again, the major focus of the organization around IPS derived cell types. Uh, more recently, the company split into two formal divisions. Uh, historically, the life sciences division was the backdrop of CDI, providing differentiated cell types from IPS lines for the purposes of research use. And with the advancement of the four clinical programs I'll briefly talk about today, we split that into a, a separate uh, cell therapeutics division of which I'm a part. Um, but, but again, underlying CDI uh, really are, are four, core tech, four core capabilities. With the uh, know-how and technology coming out of University of Wisconsin and Jamie Thompson's work in IPS rote reprogramming of human cells, obviously that's the foundation of the company. And not just to do limited reprogramming of a handful of, of donor cells, but to do that at scale as an example, our partnership with the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine has us reprogramming about 1,000 cells per year. So we can do this sort of relatively at scale at automation. But that's really just the beginning. The second core capability is to, uh, to differentiate those to high purity, high volume, cryopreserved cell types, um, initially for use by our, 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 by our partners, primarily uh, Biopharma, uh, to use as foundations for um, phenotypic screens. And in many instances, we get requests to either take uh, different IPS donor lines from people that have specific um, disease pre presenting genotypes or induce those genotypes in normal cells or take disease cells and knock out uh, the disease, uh, the, gene the disease, the causing genetics of the disease and uh, make those into the differentiated cells as well as part of our MyCell program. So that's the underlying foundation of the company that from which in terms of our life sciences platform, we currently sell cryopreserved differentiated cells from about 14, of 14 different types. You can see that across many of the different derm layers, we have cardi uh, cardiac cells, many different liver cells, uh, hematopoietic lines, a lot of neural lines. Um, and all of these are done and sold as cryopreserved products with high purity, high purity, purity done in quality systems that are really high standards. And this was really the foundation well, let me get back to that. So that's really drove a lot of work in the life sciences business. And it's been the, the, those underlying technologies, that underlying process development capability, and really the personnel um, and their understanding of process development and also regulatory that allowed us to look at this same catalog, to look at our um, personnel and to look at the market opportunities and begin making decisions on where do we want to take the, the underlying core technologies and cell types and translate those into clinical cell therapy programs. Um, and in part driven by those decision-making criteria, but also by certain partnerships, uh, we centered all on you know, really four different clinical programs, three of which are listed here in this graphic, that being ocular, uh, Parkinson's disease, and cardiac. And I'll spend a minute uh, with each of those programs talking about where we are. Uh, but in terms of our sort of therapeutic regimen um, with IPS cell, IPS cells themselves, you know, IPS for autologous is really not something that's explored. Um, it's an interesting concept, but IPS cells themselves obviously lend themselves to a really an allogeneic approach. Um, and simply put, you can have, you know, a couple of different strategies using IPS um, cells and their uh, corresponding differentiated cell types as the foundation for your therapy. One is sort of a true, I'll call it, for lack of a better phrase, uh, immunoblind allogeneic. The second approach which we, which, which we have taken is building a library of, of HLA-based based IPS cells to serve as the foundation, not only of our clinical programs, but also making these lines available to others for their programs. And so the strategy here is we have a partner that has access to uh, millions of individuals that have been typed. And they've identified several hundred thousand individuals that are homozygous for HLA, A, B, and DR. And C generally comes along with linkage. And so in identifying these individuals, we go through the standard IRB process. And we have sort of a three-phase program 
where the, the, the aim at the end of the day is to really have a therapeutic IPS bank that covers most of the major haplotypes across all the major geographies. That's the end goal at the end of the three, phase, uh, three phases of the project, where you're sort of walking up that asymptotic line there. The first phase is complete, where we've got five or so lines complete, master cell banks being made, and that covers about 35% of the population. We're in the process of the second phase, and, and some of these lines are being processed right now, where at the conclusion of this, we'll have about 50% of the US population covered, some percentage of Europe covered, and then phase three is where this really scales up even further, where we will have most of the major geographies covered. And within the current clinical programs that I'll describe, we're testing the, our ability to differentiate um, our clinical cell therapy products from all of these lines to make sure that's possible. So this HLA super donor bank really is foundational to our programs and represents sort of our approach to an allogeneic solution. But there's a lot more to building a cell therapy, there are many additional principles to building a cell therapy solution than just what you see in the middle there, which is the immune matching. Um, as I said this morning, the aim with our program is really to develop cell therapy products uh, that are replacing the disease cell. Uh, and I bring this up because that's decidedly different, for example, than a paracrine type, of, type approach that you might see. Um, obviously, our goal is to achieve um, a transfer to CGMP where those process development capabilities allow us to at least to get to materials necessary for phase two, if not say phase three. And as many of you know, the preclinical models for many of these uh, programs simply don't exist. So there's a lot of effort around that. And the, uh, the complexities around the surgical delivery also need to, be, need to be addressed. So the four programs, and I'll briefly go through all of these except for the last one, which is still in the earlier stages. Um, they are ocular. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that's spun out into a majority of subsidiary called Opsis Therapeutics. Uh, initially focused on AMD, partnered with the NEI, um, and then following on with some work in uh, retinopathies because of the photoreceptors. Uh, the cardiac programs, neurodegenerative, and oncology. Uh, those first three are either in definitive animal studies or about to go into definitive animal studies. On the CAR-T side, we're really just getting to a process where we can confirm, and I'm not going to talk any more about the CAR-T in, in slides, so let me briefly address that. So where we are with that is ensuring that we can develop um, phenotypically accurate T and NK cells, that we can make CAR constructs, and that we can combine those in our iPS-derived T cells to show efficacy in vivo initially in mice. So that was really the starting point um, and, the, and the status of the, um, of the oncology program. Now Parkinson's, and I'm not going to go through all of this, I'm, I'm going to fly through some summary points on all of this. Um, but as many of you know, uh, Parkinson's has a history, um, albeit spotted, of having some proof uh, with fetal-derived cells. And I think what our aim was, as I said, is, is to develop the right cell that have the right characteristics, uh, the right phenotypic and marker characteristics, and ensure that um, they show the right response um, in the initial in vivo models. And to date, we've shown uh, positive long-term engraftment in both, in both rat and monkeys, and the amelioration of some induced phenot uh, phenotypes in rat, uh, some Parkinsonian phenotypes where they sort of run in circles, and you can ameliorate that over time. In this case, it was six months. So that's the, that's the Parkinson's program. The cardiac program, similar content on the left, so let me just focus on the right-hand side for a minute. Uh, cardiac is an interesting one because we have, um, I think, the luxury of isolating cell candidates along the, differentiate, along the timeline of differentiation. That is, candidate one is really a cardiac progenitor cell. And this is an interesting candidate because while your dose may be lower, um, it'll, it'll expand um, in vitro, in vivo. Um, it'll lower your dose, but it might have higher risk of arrhythmia. And on the other extreme, candidate three is a fully differentiated cardiomyocyte, which might require a higher dose, but it might have a possibility, possibility of lower, um, uh, lower cases of arrhythmia. So we're pursuing uh, all three clinical candidates right now, and our aim is to select one of those. The ocular program, as I mentioned, was really initially seeded with a partnership with the National Eye Institute, where um, our initial goal was to take their preliminary protocol for, ret for, for making retinal pigment epithelial cells and spend about a year to make that ready for CGMP production where we could make sufficient material um, to get into the, um, 
preclinical studies that are happening right now. Um, and as a, an interesting side note, if you, if you see the graphic on the right hand side, that's an example of us making RPEs from a number of different um, HLA lines. And you can see there's uh, not exacting consistency with respect to the purity of these RPEs that get manufactured, which is why we had to invent a purification methodology that effectively normalizes that um, all to a high 95% plus purity level. Um, and as I mentioned, we spun that out into a new venture called Opsis Therapeutics, which brought with it, um, with Dr. David Gam, some additional, additional capabilities uh, for photoreceptors. And that affords us a lot more sort of uh, therapeutic modalities to potentially go after. So to accomplish all this, and thankfully with the acquisition by Fujifilm that affords some additional capital, um, we are building um, a large, it's more than just a CGMP facility, it's a new headquarters within which we will do all of the CGMP level manufacturing for those four programs in addition to doing contract development manufacturing. So this is, design, this is uh, due to break ground shortly. Um, and because this is a sort of a partnering meeting, let me just close about how CDI uh, thinks about partnering um, in, in this space. And I think for us, we're open to sort of creative partnership modes with the current four cell therapy programs that I flew through fairly quickly. And as I mentioned this morning, I think we've got some other capabilities and technologies to bring to bear as, as other partners think about advancing their programs, which is making those HLA lines broadly available, um, including with it the freedom to operate. And whether that's an extension of the uh, availability of those lines, um, leveraging that new facility for contract manufacturing. And what I didn't spend a lot of time talking about which is um, a significant portion of our effort with Fujifilm is they have set aside a reasonable amount of money for, for a corporate venture fund to make investments um, primarily in emerging regenerative medicine companies uh, that are primarily non-competitive. And this is a vehicle that Fujifilm at large is using um, to expand its footprint, its capabilities, its reach into regenerative medicine at large. But frankly, it's also um, a vehicle where we can help feed into um, partnerships on this lower box where perhaps those companies that we invest in will leverage us for contract manufacturing and consider those HLA lanes, although that's not a prerequisite. So uh, with that whirlwind tour of CDI, I appreciate your time. Thank you.